Hey everybody, tonight we're going to talk about uh, getting IPs and DNS information about your servers. Now, when I usually teach beginning PowerShell, I usually show how cool it is that you can integrate with the command line. And the, the, the best way I do that is to show how you can integrate with ping, right? So if I say ping, oh, we'll say a con, then I can get that, right? But I can easily integrate uh, PowerShell vars with that. I can say cache server equals webcon. And then I can say ping server. And I get the same thing, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're one of, if you're gonna do this in an automated process, say uh, you know, you've got something that's gonna collect information. <clears throat> information for all of your SQL boxes and put it in a table somewhere, right? That's what I do with it, okay? I've got a, a list of my servers and I put my IP and my DNS information in that table with them so I can make, you know, so I'll, so I'll have all that information available, right? So let's go ahead and do it. So the problem with this is, of course, with the, I, with the, uh, the ping method, you get four different outputs and really uh, you get a, a single output, right? Let me see if I can do this ping server and let's say that a equals ping server. So it'll take that a second. Now you see when I get a, it's the entire output. So it's just a big fat field of text really, right? So to get the, the IP address out of there that I'm looking for, would actually be a lot of code, a lot of parsing code, and it just wouldn't even be worth it, right? It'd be very error prone and all of that. So there's got to be an easier way, right? And as it turns out, there is. We can use the PowerShell commandlet test connection and then pass it the address. <clears throat> now I get these nice, uh, I get these nice, uh, columns here in my in my output right which means if i do that and i go to get member hold on it'll take it a second there we go so you see these are all properties that i'm getting here but the ip the uh, the ipv4 address property is actually a script property and you can see what it maps to it maps to get ip host equals system.net.dns.get host entry so on and so on right so it would be really difficult to, uh, and, and also, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of scatterbrained tonight, guys. Uh, let's do this again. So also, if you're looking for a an automated process, um, you've still got four different lines to deal with. I'm still calling four times, right? What I want is a single output, and, uh, and I don't want to have to cursor through anything. So let's go ahead and pull a help on test connection and we'll see if there's anything in here that'll help me it just so happens that there's a count right so count let me see if I do this if I say uh, detailed and let's look at what the parameter says and you see I'm teaching you how to investigate this stuff right so count specifies the number of echo requests to send so that sounds exactly like what I want let me more through that there we go so let's find test connection, and then let's say count one. Hey, look at that, I only got one, excellent. So far so good. But all I'm really interested in is the IPv4 address because I already know what the source is, right? I mean, I don't, and I don't care how long it took. All I'm interested in is reporting the IP. So, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Hey, get over here. There we go, let's put that right there. Okay, so um, I've got I've got it down to one row. Now I need to get it down to IP4. Now the easiest way to do that, I'll just go ahead and show you, is set a variable. Let's go ahead and put this in parentheses. And remember, anything in parentheses is going to be executed first, right? So you're actually going to get the result of this. So we'll say test connection con count one, and I'm going to say dot. Uh, what am I going to say? IPv4 address. 
Oops. What did I do wrong? Ah, there it is. Count one. That'll do it. Now if I say A, uh, I'm going to do IP address to string, and there. Now I've got my IP address. So it's a two-phase process, right? Um, but it's quite doable. Quite doable. Now we're going to move on to uh, getting the DNS. So you also sometimes need to look up the DNS entry for a server. So I'll show you how to do that. And if you're going to store that in the same table, then, you know, you'll just make these calls at the same time and you'll be golden. So what we're going to count on here, remember before in when we were looking at the IP address, the IPv4 address came across as a system.net.dns, right? Well, we're going to use that same thing to get the DNS entry. So I'm going to start off here. Let's say system.net.dns. Ah, double colon. I'm going to say get host entry. And I'll say, uh, I'll use the web phone again. And there we go. So now I get, and oddly enough, I get the address list as well, right? So, and that's another way you could do that. So now uh, I've got my, my uh, host name, but I want to get only the host name, right? So we're going to do the same trick we did last time. I'm going to enclose this in an extra parentheses. And I'm going to go for the host name. I'm going to hit home. I'm going to say dollar $B. And, uh, let's say DNS, just so that we're not confused equals and I'm gonna open my parentheses right so I'm gonna I'm gonna execute this and then I'm gonna get the property hostname from it and I'm gonna assign that to the variable DNS now I have just my hostname and it's just that simple there's no reason to do a bunch of coding around all of this stuff you can do the exact same thing now like I said a minute ago I can easily uh, I can, I can easily use test connection, but I can also use this as well. When I'm just getting the IP address, I like to use test connection because it's easier to remember than, than all of that. But if I wanted to say this and say address list, then I can get the address list too. But you see now I've got some stuff to get out, right? Now I have to say .dns. Uh, IP address to string and it didn't give it to me. Oh, I bet I know what it is. I bet you anything this is returned as an array. Okay, there you go. See, it's an array. So there are a couple ways we can get the information out of this array, but the easiest way is to pipe it to a for each and then say, what's that uh, IP? There we go, and then we have it. So it's a little convoluted that way, which is why I prefer test connection because it's just a lot less coding, you know. So yeah, you're going to be making two calls to the server instead of one, but you know, in my opinion, the lack of coding kind of makes that worth it. It's just test connection uh, count one is just easier for me to remember, right? So anyway, uh, that's how you get. Uh, th there's a couple simple ways to get IP and DNS information from your servers, and a nice single autonomous. Uh, piece of information. Talk to you later.